Oh, Nathan, it is no longer looking like Colorado in the sun. Guess where we're at? Golf course. That's right, and that means we're in Arizona. Arizona. Toyota flew us down here for the launch of the brand new 2013 RAV4, and we're gonna get to... We're gonna do a first review just for you. Coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. This is the fourth generation of what is, well, an iconic car, and it's iconic because Toyota with the RAV4 created the small crossover segment. So cars like the Honda CRV, the Tiguan, the Ford Escape, they all owe their life to this car. And this year's model, it's much sharper, it's much more angular, it's much sportier. It looks like it wants to be driven. And you know what? It does want to be driven. And that's part of Toyota's new strategy. They're trying to make cars that are much more emotionally engaging. And I think from the outside, they've succeeded. I gotta ask you, what's your favorite part of the new car? <laughs> My Personally. favorite part yeah. is just the way it drives. It's got this thing called a sport button. And the sport button remaps the throttle and also changes the electric uh, power ste steering and um, really gives the driver a sense of excitement on the road. Something that you might not have previously expected on a RAV4, but now even everyday driving can be a blast. Yeah, it seems like Toyota is trying to build more emotional cars. Is that part of the strategy here? It is, definitely. Yeah. I mean, Akio Toyota has uh, announced publicly that he's looking to build more exciting cars. We call it Wakudoki. It's that heart-pounding, racing feeling that you get of enjoyment when you're driving a vehicle. And I think that comes through loud and clear on the RAV4. Waku doki, huh? Mm -hmm. you know, Waku doki. Sounds like a Willy Wonka chocolate bar. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more delicious, I think, than a bar of chocolate. <laughs> There you are. Can you tell it's a little bigger back there? It's a lot bigger, a lot easier to use. Lower lifting. More importantly, I fit. But check this out. Back seat space is pretty good, good for legs, and they recline. You are living large, my friend. I'm always living large. <sighs> it's comfy. As you can see from the front to the back, it's completely redesigned with our very angular and pointed headlights with the chrome piece that runs through to the headlight uh, all the way to the end, creating a real cohesive part. Um, this XLE, which is gonna be our volume leader, has 17 inch alloys, five spoke. Uh, we've got integrated turn signals. We've got standard roof rail on XLE and Limited. And when you kind of come around to the back, yep. you see perhaps the biggest change for RAV4, no more spare tire on that back hatch. What'd you do with it? <laughs> we put it underneath the rear deck. <laughs> so it's not gone, don't worry. You still have a spare when you need it. Yeah, it was kind of uh, awkward because you had to open the door and sometimes you'd open it into the s curb or the sidewalk so you mm -hmm. couldn't really get your stuff out of it. Right, we put a rear lift gate rather than the swing gate. And on limited models, it's got power functionality as well also height adjustable so if you happen to live in a place with a low ceiling in your garage yep. you never have to worry about that rear lift gate hitting up against the ceiling now um, in terms of your competition who is this directly aimed at what other cars well you know it's a really competitive segment it is so we look at a wide range but of course the honda crv and the ford escape are two that we've got our eye on right now now toyota invented this small crossover segment with this very car and nathan it competes with a lot of popular cars. I'm going to name the car and you give me one word to describe the car. Go for it. All right. Volkswagen Tiguan. Expensive. <laughs> Mazda CX-5. Sexy. Honda CRV. <laughs> <laughs> Kia Sportage. With the turbo? Yeah. 
All right, and Toyota RAV4. Not too shabby. That was more than one word. I know, I can't say not too shabby in one word. <laughs> and um, can you open it up, show us sure. the interior volume? Is that more or less than the outgoing model? Do you know? It's a small amount more. Yep. Um, about 4, 0.4 cubic feet more, but while that sounds like a small number, it's actually pretty impressive because we've kept the large capacity while moving the rear, uh, the tire down underneath. And you can see. That's where you hit it. Yeah, that's <laughs> where we hit it. Also, this is our cargo cover, which when you want, you can put it up back here and it covers what you've got in this space. And when you don't want it, you can just put it right here, store it away, and you always have it when you need it. As a father, somebody who has to drive crossovers, it seems, I've gotten used to the old RAV4. It was a good vehicle. I loved the V6. It was powerful and it had a lot of room and I was able to put a lot of family members in there because they actually had an option for three rows of seats. Completely different now. This is a four cylinder. This is a, in some ways, a smaller vehicle because, well, frankly, there's no V6 option and there's no more third row seat. With that said, I will say this, it feels kind of like a Camry, kind of like a tall Camry. There's a couple reasons for that, one of which is the engine, and the other is the driving position. Everything's changed, and it's a little bit lower of a vehicle. That means around corners, much better. Now the old model was kind of a Swiss army knife, right? You can get it in a four cylinder, a six cylinder, you can get it in five passenger, seven passenger. This one, one engine choice, mm -hmm. five passengers only. Why did you decide to kind of change the shift of the marketing? Okay, well our V6 mix yeah. was in the teens and that over time had actually come down from a, a little bit of a higher number. With the focus on MPG today, really across the automotive industry, but especially in the small SUV segment, we felt like it was best to put our efforts towards refining the transmission here. So we've moved to a 6AT up from a 4AT with that four cylinder engine. And that helps us achieve up to 31 miles per gallon on the highway with the front wheel drive model. I think the old one was 28, 28. is that right? So yep. you've got three MPG more yes, than, the, than the outgoing model. All right, this engine is designed to be more fuel efficient than to be a rocket ship. It's actually the same engine that's in the four cylinder Toyota Camry. So of course the question is, will 176 horsepower and 172 pound feet of torque go zero to 60 in under 10 seconds? Well, my man Nathan is gonna find out. I'm in sport mode. I'm gonna load it up a little bit. Let's see, hopefully I'll get 2000 RPM. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, just gonna show battery right off the line. Hmm. Okay. Not too bad. Zero to sixty. First run. Nine point five seconds. Now I kind of did that with Roman in the past, recent past, with him in the car. And I think the time was just about the same. So nine and a half seconds. Brand new interior for a brand new RAV4. And you know what? Toyota did a much better job this time. They actually took some interesting colors and interesting shapes and they put it together in a very cohesive package. With that said, there are some cheap plastics here and there, but I really like the fake leather, and it is fake leather, with the raised white stitching. I think it looks really good. Well, on both of our XLE and our limited models, mm -hmm. the dash is covered with a material called Softex. So it's not leather. That's a leather alternative, and that's the same material that covers the seats on the limited grade. And it's, you know, that's a part of the vehicle that you touch a lot. So it's nice to have that soft padded material with that French accent stitching to really, you know, remind you that you're in a nice car and that you should enjoy the drive. Nathan, 
You hurt my feeling. I thought that was real leather. No, nope, fake leather, but you know what? It's okay because according to Toyota, it stays much cooler on hot days so you don't fry your legs when you wear shorts. Now if you're shopping for a RAV4, there are three models to choose from. There's a base model front wheel drive LE which starts right around $23,000 and it goes all the way up to this one which is the Limited which tops out at right around $30,000. Now there's one in the middle called the XLE which obviously is the one that most people will buy because just that's the way product planning works. Now you can have all wheel drive with all three models but that's a $1,400 premium. Your LE, uh, we're expecting that to be about 30% of our overall mix, and XLE with at 40%, and Limited, again, at 30%. Uh, they all offer a ton of standard equipment that customers really demand. For example, the 6.1-inch audio screen that you see on this XLE model, standard across the board. It also includes a backup camera, something that our customers have told us they really appreciate. Now, new is uh, dual climate control, is that right? Dual zone automatic climate control. It's standard on XLE and Limited. And what else is new? What other new kind of gizmos are there? Well, we've got Entune with navigation, which was available on the 2012 model, but it's now available on XLE and on Limited. A new feature as well is the JBL Green Edge audio system, available on our Limited models with 11 speakers in nine locations. That uses a lower energy drain on the vehicle, so it's more eco-friendly. And how about the uh, contrasting interior colors? Those are new, aren't they? You call them block, yep. I think? We call it color block. Yep. So you can see it on the door panel and you can see it in the interior as well. Um, Limited and XLE come in three interior colors. You've got gray, black, and beige. Our LE model comes in beige and gray. And all three of them use color blocking. Now, Nathan, of course, people want to know how will this new RAV4 do off-road? And we don't. We don't know yet, but we will find out when we get one in Colorado. So we can't really give it a buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it rating. It's just not fair, having driven it for what? A couple hours. That's right. So you have to come back when we get it in Colorado and we get to see what a lowered 1.2 inches lower RAV4 does on our off-road trail. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. See you next time for the Fast Lane Car. Thanks for watching. Nathan. I know it's a new RAV4, but it looks like the old RAV4. Well, kind of modified. Yes, and that's because it's the RAV4 EV, newest generation. And it's only being sold in California, and they're only selling 2,600 of them. Coming up next on the Fast Lane Car.